In this uh, video, we will see how we can configure uh, SSL in WebLogic Server. So high level steps are first, you have to create a key store, which will contain your private key and the certificates. Second, you have to configure self-signed certificate or either CA certificate. So if you are going for a production environment, then you have to configure the CA certificates. And then if you are in a demo testing or development kind of environment, then you have to configure that with a self-signed certificate. Okay. So if you are going to use self-signed certificate, okay, so first you have to generate the self-signed certificate and then you have to import in your key store. Second, if you wanted to configure with the certificate authority third party certificates, okay, then you have to generate a CSR, okay. And then after that, you have to send that CSR to the certificate authority. After that, they will send you the root certificate, intermediate certificate and server certificate, which you can import in your key store. So what is the difference is here when you are going to configure with self self and certificate and CA certificate is self and certificate you have to generate by your own and then you have to import in your key store. But when you are going for the configurations of the CA certificates or third party certificates, then you have to generate a CSR, which will contain the information of your organization and your and the URL of your website, okay, which the end user is going to access via the browser. And that you have to send it to CA and then CA will send you the digital certificates along with the root certificate. So that means you will get a root certificate, internet certificate and server certificate. So just like the self signed certificate, you have to import all three certificates in your key store. Okay, so once you have imported the certificates in your key store, then you can configure WebLogic to point to your key stores. Okay. And the key tool utility will be used here, okay, to generate and input certificates. Now, the first one is how to create a key store, okay. So first you go to your bin directory inside your domain and then run the set domain env.sh to set your environment variables. And then you have to create the key store by executing the pillow command, okay. So first you can create a directory inside which you will store all of your certificates. So in my case, I have created a directory with name certs inside my domain. Okay, so I will generate and store all my certificate inside this directory. And this is the command which will be used to generate your key store. Okay, so what are the different options here is the all key store entries are accessed by the way of unique aliases. Okay. So there are two color code are here. One is amber and second is in yellow. Okay. So amber one is the standard syntax of the command and the, I'm sorry that, yes. So uh, that uh, yellow mark items. Okay. These are, you can say about the uh, variables. Okay. That you have to change according to your environments. Okay. And then amber mark items are the standard command options. Okay. So key tool is the utility that comes with the Java. Okay, and when you are running this command, okay, so what are the options here? First one is the alias. So when you are generating a key store, okay, then later when you are going to access your certificates, okay, then you have to access the certificates from the key store with the help of aliases. So we are providing the alias with hyphen ls. And then second is the key algorithm that when you specify the algorithm to be used to generate the key pair. So when you are going to generate a key pair, which will contain your private key and the later on with your public key as well, Okay, so for that you need an algorithm that has that is designed or you can be decided with key L parameter. And then when you are decide, when you are generating a, a key, okay, with the help of key algorithm, then you have to specify the size of your key as well, which will be defined with the help of key size parameter. Okay, and then sign algorithm. Okay, so sign algorithm is that you can say is an algorithm that should be used to sign the self-sign certificate. So when you are signing a certificate. Uh, for self, uh, you are signing a self signed certificate. Then you have to provide the, this uh, uh, this algorithm, okay? Which which algorithm you wanted to sign for your self signed certificate? But when you will be using a CA certificate, that certificate will be signed by the latest algorithm, okay? By the certificate authority, and then they will send you the certificate. And then hyphen D name, okay? This will contain your organization address along with the website that you are going to configure with the. Uh, uh, your uh, for your application okay and then key pass is a password for your private key and store pass is a password for your key store and then hyphen key store is the name of your key store okay so that there's a key store you have to provide the name of your key store which will be ended with the dot jks extension and for your key store you will have a password 
and inside that you have a private key then again you have a private uh, password for your private key okay and when you are going to access the contents from your key store okay uh, then you have to use the aliases for that one okay so this is all about the command that will be used to generate your uh, key store okay and then if you want to view the content of your key store so what are the content you have a private key and then along that you will have a, your different kind of a certificates that you are going to import in your uh, key store okay so anytime if you wanted to view the uh, view any all the certificates that you have imported in your key store so this is the command for that one which is hyphen list hyphen p hyphen key store that you have to provide the name of your key store along with the password of your key store and it will list all the certificate which is there inside your key store so first step we have completed to create a key store and then now for suppose that you are going to uh, uh, configure with the self sign certificate okay so in that case you are not going to send any kind of a csr to certificate authority okay that means what you are doing is that you have to generate your own certificate which is a self sign certificate and then same certificate you can import in your key store so first command that is export certificate is a command that is you will you can use to import your own self sign uh, certificate export your own uh, self sign certificate okay so here i am i am exporting my certificate in a file that is root.cer okay and this certificate again i am going to export from my key store okay and then after that you have to import the same certificate in your key store okay so the uh, the uh, the values that i have specified in the command are very much clear okay as i have explained in the previous uh, slide as well where we had created our key store then most of the uh, the parameters you will have you will get it from there the kind of alias that you have given and then the name of your intermediate or root certificate and the, the name of your uh, key store and the password of your key store and the password of your key all the parameter that you have specify along with few new parameters that is self self explanatory okay so once your self sign certificate is done you have to go for the configuration of the web logic okay but now i am going to explain you how to generate a ca certificate as well Okay, how to arrange a CA certificate as well, and then we will move to the web logic configuration. Okay, so now uh, if we are planning to uh, configure web logic with the CA certificate or third-party certificate, okay, so for that you have to generate a CSR, which is called a certificate signing request, and this is the command on the screen that you can say this is the command that you can run, okay, and it will generate a CSR with the name server dot CSR, okay. And once this CSR is generated, you can send this CSR file, okay, to the certificate authority, okay. And after that, certificate authority will uh, issue you three certificates: that is, root certificate, intermediate certificate, and your server certificate, or you can say the digital sign, uh, digitally, digitally signed certificates, okay. And once you have received all three certificates, you can just import all three certificates in your key store, as we have imported the self signed certificate in the key store. Okay, so in this next slide, I'm going to uh, explain you the command that we can use to import our all three certificate. Okay, so here, suppose that we have uh, a server certificate, which you have saved with the name server.cer, then root certificate you have saved with the name root ca.cer, and then we have saved the intermediate certificate with the name inter.cer. So there could be more than one intermediate certificate, as I have explained in my initial lecture. Okay. And then you have to import all the certificate in your key store, right? So first command is straightforward. You have to import your root certificate first, okay? And the command is almost the same that the same way we have exp uh, imported the self sign certificate, okay? And here what we are giving is that we are providing first the root certificate. And then second, we are importing the intermediate certificate, okay? Similarly, if you have more than one in intermediate certificate, use the same command okay and then import all the intermediate certificates one by one and the third you have to import your server certificate okay so when you are importing make sure to follow the same sequence first you have to import your root certificate second you have to import your intermediate certificate and then third you have to import your server certificate so now we have imported all of our uh, all of our certificates in our key store right so next we'll go for the configurations of the web logic the first part is the configurations of your key store right so by default when you go to log uh, your web logic console and you click on the servers and then after that you click on the ssl tab and then not on ssl on the key store tab first okay then you can see the default key store is demo identity and demo trust okay this is the default demo identity and trust key store which comes along with the web logic server 
Okay, and you can see the name of file demo identity.jks and demo trust.jks along with the path where this identity this demo files are exist. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to change this demo identity and trust key store with our custom key store that we have created. The last one is your Java standard trust key store that is a standard uh, trust key store that comes with along with your Java. Okay. So first of all, you have to go to your configurations key store and then click on your key stores and then select custom identity and custom trust because we are going to configure web logic with our custom identity and trust certificates. And now you have to configure your key store, right? For that, you have to provide the complete detail of your identity and trust, okay? So now here, what we are doing is that we are providing the same path or same key store name for identity and trust, which is key store dot JKS. Okay, so it is up to you either you can have a single key store for identity and trust or you can have a different uh, uh, key stores okay, for your identity and trust. So by default, if you see in, uh, saw in the previous screen, the WebLogic come with the default identity and trust with a different key stores. Okay, but here what I'm using, I have imported all my certificates in my same key store. So I'm using the same path or you can say about the same key store. If you wanted to have a different key store uh, for identity and trust, then you can import your server certificate in, in, in your one uh, one key store, and then you can import your root and intermediate certificate in different key stores, okay? And then you can point to that, okay? So apart from that, apart from your key store, what else is required is that the kind of a key store, it is a .jks kind of a key store, and then path of your key store, and then you have to provide the password for your key store, whatever the password you have used for your key store, okay? So once all details are entered and you have to click on save, Okay, so once you have given uh, the uh, the path of your identity and trust, okay, so when application is going to use that one, so they have to access is with the help of your private key password, right? Okay, this is a security feature. So now again, you have to go to your server, click on configurations and SSL tab, and then there you have to provide the your private key alias and the private key password. Okay, as I have explained initially when we were discussing about uh, while we are creating the key store, okay, that time I have said that when you are going to uh, access your key store with the help of private keys, okay, and then for that you have to provide the alias and then password, okay, this for the security feature. So what we are doing here is we have provided the alias of our private key, which we had given when we have created the key store. And along with that, we are providing here the password of our uh, private key. Key. Okay, so once this is done, you have to enable the SSL port, right? Because SSL, you have to enable uh, your server to listen on an SSL port. Okay, so by default, when we talk about the admin server, so here because I have configured for my admin server, so the non SSL port for a WebLogic server is 7001. And when we will enable the SSL from the WebLogic console, okay, the by default it will be enabled on port 7002. But if you can, if you want, then you can change the port according to your requirement. So similarly, I have configured this for admin server. So when I'm going to access my admin server again uh, on the port 7002, then I can specify the HTTPS instead of HTTPS with the port 7001. So your WebLogic admin console will be accessible with the help of HTTP with port 7001. Along with that, HTTPS on port 7002. So now if you have multiple applications and you have a multiple uh, managed servers and you have deployed your applications on your managed server, then make sure to configure the SSL for each of your managed servers separately. The similar configuration that I have explained, okay, so far that you have to follow your the same instructions to configure your SSL for each and every managed server. Okay, so this is the uh, console that I have accessed with the help of SSL. SSL by providing the HTTPS, okay? And now here you can see that because I am using the self-signed certificate, okay? So it is showing me a warning. This is why this this as this, this self-signed certificate is not recommended for the production because the end user will not get a confidence if we will, they will access your website and they will get a security prompt that this is this website is not secure. So this is the reason basically in the, all the production environments, okay? The most of the time, or you can say almost all of the time, your production applications are configured with the third party CA SSL certificates. And this is the final diagram. For that, you can see my other lectures, which is on WebLogic server architecture, part one, two, and three. Okay. So, this is why I have, I have included here is that to, to explain you that when you are going 
to configure your SSL certificate. So in enterprise world, most of the time, SSL is terminated at the load balancer level. Okay, so that means when you are configuring the CA certificate or CA SSL for with the CA certificate, then SSL will be configured at the load balancer level. And inside your load balancer, you have a web server, application server, and database etc. Okay, according to your architecture, and for inside web servers and applications, you can configure with the demo or self sign certificates. Inside that, it is not required. But in an environment where you don't have a load balancer. That means uh, ex any external hardware load balancer and you are using this web directly web servers, okay? Then all certificates are configured at the web server level, okay? So thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos. Thank you very much.